walking behind. Let's do that one more time. <laughs> one, two.
Just hiding behind the video camera, really. <laughs> How you guys doing? We're doing fine. Good. Thank you. Nice to be here.
I did not. that very first summer and we stayed there in August in the Pattisons, many of you know, Abby and R, uh, rented it during July for the next 20 years. So it's fitting that we celebrate my current anniversary here in the kind of location of life as Granny Moore and Johnny and her mother with her wonderful generosity and open house that she used my parents to Betty Garrett's and Piney's Steve. So Piney's house was as tiny as it was charming. The kitchen was like a ship's galley. There was only one bedroom and an annex with a third bed. The house had lovely furniture, so many books, and lots of paintings of penguins. <laughs> but because it was so small, Sandy and I had to sleep in a tent for years through the 1960s, 70s, and the 1980s. The little path that went from the road below our house went under that privet hedge and then past the tennis court and then to the road near Alec and Janet Brown's house was well trod and added to the charm of the house. We bought and added to the house in 1987 and all of us could finally then sleep inside. So Cuddyhook has been a place of continuity and community in my parents' marriage through a number of moves on the mainland and they've returned here for 41 years and always to Piney's house, just nine years shy of their 50 years marriage. My parents moved to Washington, D.C. Uh, in 1971 to that area. My father had been going there for a year or so prior to this to work on the beginnings of the federal health maintenance organizations, working under Elliot Richardson in the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. We stayed there until 73 when my father took a position at the University of Pittsburgh in the School of Public Health. During the two years we lived in Bethesda, Maryland, uh, we spent six months living in Geneva, Switzerland from 72 to 73. My father had received a Ford Foundation grant to study the health systems of three European countries, Denmark, Germany, and Britain. My, father's, my mother spent a lot of time on, on August on Cuddy Hunk in the 1970s, blackberrying and playing tennis, and occasionally playing the flute, as well as singing and visiting. Blackberry guys and jam were the highlight of her ventures into the briar patch. Today, we'll have some delicious cobblers from Cuddy Hunk blackberries. still is, and was also touched by the freedom and the creativity of the late 1960s and early 1970s. There were garbage can painting contests, interesting art on the roads, and the building of course of the windmill on the West End. All came out of this. In the 1970s, many of these days had blue skies and 12 dollars very fun for sailing in yacht club. And the weather's a little bit changed these days, I think, relative to that time. One August, maybe five August ago, we had uh, 30 days of greatness, as I recall. My mother went 
back to school in the early 1970s to become a social worker. She returned, returned after working as the social worker. She retired after working as the social work director of a 430-bed hospital in Pittsburgh for the last nine years of her career. And while at the University of Pittsburgh, my father in 1979 was asked by then Governor Dick Thornburg to serve as the Secretary of Health in the state of Pennsylvania. Thornburg picked my father for this position because he had, already, he had set up a federal health program and was recommended by a close advisor. Soon after this appointment, 12 days, the Three Mile Island nuclear accident occurred in central Pennsylvania. <laughs> my father, the official responsible for managing the health issues, later openly criticized the administration's preparedness for two main reasons. They didn't have physicians on what was the equivalent of Pennsylvania's Nuclear Regulatory Commission to bring forward health considerations and planning for existing nuclear plants. It only had engineers. And Pennsylvania didn't have any iodide stockpiled. Iodide can protect the thyroid gland from radiation in the event of exposure. Um, so my father resigned a year or so after the accident occurred and continued to speak and write publicly and critically of the country's preparedness for nuclear accidents. And throughout this time, my parents returned to Cuddyhunt. Okay. In the intervening years in Pittsburgh, my father continued to teach about health maintenance organizations in the U.S. health system at the University of Pittsburgh and also taught med medicine grand rounds for years. My father also continued to speak internationally about health systems and nuclear preparedness issues. And my parents traveled a number of times around the world during this time or later on semester at sea related voyages, once as the academic dean uh, for my father when he in also invited a number of cuddy hunkers. <laughs> they continued to travel to other places around the world during these years as well. And in Pittsburgh now they continue to participate actively in a Unitarian book group which they've been involved with for many years. My father was Cuddyhunk Island's doctor uh, for many, many years, decades, 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, much, some of the 90s, uh, and provided medical advice uh, for many who needed it. Uh, my father, a wit, a wordsmith, a maverick with a keen political sense, and a punter with a very quick mind, someone who exercised his mind almost without thinking about it, like some people exercise their bodies, had a concussion on, the sem on Seminar at Sea in Belize in December 2004. And over the past two and a half years, he's faced a number of health challenges that are a consequence of this. And my mother, a remarkable caregiver with a creative spirit, has weathered these challenges and helped my father in remarkable ways. So my parents have celebrated their anniversary on Cuddyhunk continuously for 41 years, often at the Bosworth House, often at the Allen House, often at Bart's Place. <laughs> Almost as uh, long as their marriage, and it's been their home in a very important and remarkable community for them, as well as for all of us, uh, which all of you have helped to make. And it's not, Cuddyhunk isn't far from where my father was born in Boston, so there's a kind of continuity for my father, especially here. Since they've retired, they have spent much of their summers on Cuddyhunk and will continue to do so for the foreseeable future. So my parents in their marriage, and uh, with my father, with his interesting mind, have created a remarkable world for themselves on Cuddyhunk, for Sandy, my brother, and myself. And I look forward to celebrating their 75th anniversary. <laughs> resembles a plate they had made 50 years ago um, that's hanging in their uh, new room in Pittsburgh and I'll give this to them shortly and also this mug and please uh, find yourself uh, a gift in uh, the room in there and uh, take it home. Uh, so we have about um, maybe three or four people who are going to share things uh, about my parents um, and their familiarity with their marriage over all these years. Uh, Dick Robb, do you want to come up and then maybe Jim Hardy and then maybe Marvin Mendel? Same Dick 
grew up. Uh, my wife Lucy and I from Boston have been friends of the Matabs for uh, a good many years, longer than Scotty would remember. Um, and so these are some thoughts about our relationship over uh, the years. Uh, one wonders, at the wedding 50 years ago, did they know that a peripatetic life was ahead? And so they needed an anchor to hold to, one that would not give way. That may be the reason we're in Cuddy Hump today. <laughs> Where have Janie and Gordon not lived since they started? From Boston and New Haven, they soon departed. From Washington, Australia, semesters at sea. Now they're in Pittsburgh. But here they need to be. We've known them since days on Beacon Hill. Our collective five kids were hard to keep still. So we repaired to the Blue Hills to breathe and to hike and to gain some sense of what nature was like. HMOs took them to D.C. We stayed behind. Nixon's health plans beckoned, but then Gordon resigned. He left before the trickster, with less honor, was done. Health care's back, Gordon. Can the fight still be won? <laughs> what makes Janie and Gordon such a great pair? Capacity for friendship, warmth, lively outlook and care, respect for each other, patience and trust, intelligence, decency, and humor's a must. Like the rest of us, They've encountered some snares and a stop or two in the shop for repairs. <laughs> but these guys are resilient. They keep up their game, be it tennis, white papers, or a brush with fame. <laughs> Janie and Gordon, we wish you the best. With champagne, yelpsters, bagpipes, and the rest. <laughs> Fifty's a big number, but you're good for more. Add some late inning runs, and we'll be back at your door. Aww. Thank you so much. Dick is an ophthalmologist, a retired nearly, probably not at a Children's Hospital for many years in, in Boston. <laughs> Jim, do you want to stand right there? Jim Hardy is a very good friend of my parents from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They uh, come to Cuddy Hunk every summer and uh, they just put together some uh, anecdotes. What he told me was I was to put together some cogent thoughts. <laughs> but if you can't tell the difference, that's all right. For all the people here who've been to Pittsburgh, raise their hand. Good. Anybody stay there? I, I grew up in, outside Philadelphia, and my mother had a aunt who lived in Fremont, Ohio. And we used to, every other year, drive from, from Philadelphia to uh, excuse me, Fremont, and that um, took a long while, and we usually passed through Pittsburgh in the dark, and saw the blast furnaces at work, and I remember as a child complaining that we never could see anything, and my father would say, well, there's nothing to see, don't worry about it. <laughs> Which was, I thought, cruel, but... <laughs> Uh, I, I inquired uh, as to whether any humor was to be uh, included in my few remarks. And uh, I got mixed response to that. So uh, I used to do a good deal of talking as a lawyer, <coughs> still do. <laughs> and I, I used to ask the class, are they, are they the guests, the $200 a day? Um, whether uh, they remember where they were 
at Pearl Harbor Day. And um, in the early years, there were a lot of hands went up. <laughs> and then towards the end, the questions came. Uh, why would you ask that? Uh, I wasn't even born then. <laughs> it's, it's hard to work <laughs> with that group. And then I would explain to them that uh, the reason I asked them was that the National Labor Relations Act was passed in 1937 and that Pearl Harbor came later. And so this statute that was making such a good living for me, uh, you know, really uh, was an old, old law. Okay, we took care of that. What's the next one? <laughs> one more, one more. There was a um, distinguished man, he can be from Cuddyhunk if you want, and he died and went to heaven, and there was St. Peter. And he said, can I go on in? And St. Peter said, uh, yeah, but you have to pass a test first. He said, what do you mean by that? He said, well, people have complained that they have no choice after they die. He said, yes. And he said, so we set up a choice program. <laughs> what do you mean? Said, See that elevator? You go over and get on that elevator and take you down to hell. And you spend a day there. <laughs> then you come up tomorrow and you try out heaven. And then on the third day, we'll meet with you and you can decide which you would prefer for eternity. He said, well, I can't imagine. I, he said, just go down. So he went over, got on the elevator, went down. The doors opened and there was a beautiful 18-hole golf course. And there were also caddies that were very attractive. And he spent the day there, had a wonderful night. And the next day he got... Uh, went back upstairs and uh, he looked at heaven and he spent his whole day on his knees praising God. He said, mm -hmm. and the next day he met with St. Peter and St. Peter said, well, you make up your mind? He said, well, yes, he said, I was never cut out to be on my knees all the time. And he said, I played golf 90% of the time. And that's a life that I was used to. And I guess, uh, I guess I have to say that I select help. St. Peter said, that's fine. Other people have preceded you. Go, go ahead down to help. So I got on the elevator. He went down. The elevator opened, and there's the devil with a toothpick in his mouth. <laughs> it was the raging fires of hell. He said, what happened here? He said, how could this have happened? He said, well, I'll tell you a secret. He said, Dick Cheney died the other day, and they sent him down here, of course, and I told him we were getting a bad reputation, so he should put a new spin on it. <laughs> well, that takes care of those jokes. <laughs> You people with most cases uh, had, did know the two people, the guests that we invited us to see, uh, Janie and Gordon. And our view of them is much different, perhaps, than yours. Uh, first place, we didn't know where Cuddy Hunk was, and B, we couldn't spell it after we heard it. So. <laughs> but they have been our good friends introduced by Jack and Teresa Wilson, and uh, we have been, how do you describe Gordon? Uh, I mean, he's tall, that's not much else. Uh, he's quiet, that's surprising for a doctor, and he, uh, he reads all the time. 5 a.m. he turns on his television, gets looks at the news, and by midnight it's time to go to bed. <laughs> I, I have always admired his friendship and his uh, intellect, and uh, I am appreciative that we were invited here. Oh, this is Ann. Where is this? 
That's my better half, as they say. Um, Janie, uh, Janie, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the end of my speech before I should. Um, we were, you heard him mention that, your son mentioned we traveled. We were in Scotland, and we were on a tour bus, and we stopped in Edinburgh, and when we started up, there weren't enough seats, and I was standing in the aisle, and the bus jerked, and I fell to the floor. And Gordon came forward, and so did Jane. Gordon had a diagnosis that he made, and Janie raced to the nearest hospital and got a wheelchair. And she came back with it and loaded me on the wheelchair and took me to the emergency room. I will leave it up to you to which person you I like the most that day. <laughs> there is a an organization in Pittsburgh. Uh, that I call it if I could read it in the Walk and Talk Club. I think it's made up of all our women friends, and they get every Friday. They go to Janie's house outside and they form up and they go for two and three hour walks and then they go for dinner, or for lunch. Then they have the eat and talk meeting coming right after the walk and talk. <laughs> and they have formed these friendships which have amazed us and delighted us for years and has been lucky enough to be in, in that group. So. There is this, I don't know, this uh, men never do form these relationships, I don't think. But what we did form a men's club. We have lunch every two months. Basically, were they husbands or future husbands or ex-husbands <laughs> of Anne's walking group. <laughs> we only meet every other month because A, we couldn't think of enough to talk about <laughs> if we talked any sooner. <laughs> so let me end by saying <laughs> if everybody on Cuddyhunk is as lovely, and I've seen no reason to say you depart, as these two people, uh, the world would be, I think, a better place. And if Gordon wants to run, run for office again, uh, I'd be glad to back him. <laughs> the only other thing I can say is I can't read it. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Uh, remember, 50 is nifty, but it'll be more fun than 51. Thank you very much, Jim. Very nice. Pardon. We've been coming to Cuddy Hunt for over 40 years, and during much of that time, uh, Gordon was the only doctor on the island. Uh, during all hours of the day and night, he took care of our wounds, our aches, our worries, and it didn't matter if you were uh, a young woman with a nursemaid's elbow off a boat, or if you were like me with a wound that never ended. Uh, Gordon was wonderful, and of course, he charged absolutely nothing. A terrible thing happened to Gordon, as you know, and uh, I would say one of the best things, and the, the best thing that could have happened is that he had Jane for a wife. We all know how Jane has, has taken care of him and has, has done this with, with such tact and grace and humor and steadfastness. But that's her nature, that's the way she is. You know, the McClouds, whatever world they find themselves in, create a new world in themselves. And that's as a, that has inspired all of us. And that world is growing this minute. the cruisers come up or maybe the cruisers can come up uh, as I 
read actually some limericks that I just recalled I had in my Sephora, my Sephora. <laughs> Sunshine!
And here comes the sun. As I predicted. Do nothing. <laughs>